Yes, I will go around and everyone acknowledge present, starting with Commissioner Rosenberg. Put your, put your mic on. Present and accounted for a leader. And Loretta is here. And I'm uh, present. And Victor Scherer is present. We have a quorum. <clears throat> the, uh, the, the next step is the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Commissioner Workmeister. All right. Everyone, please rise. <clears throat> Hand over heart, face the flag, and follow me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comments, uh, if anyone is, has anyone applied or, or requested public comment? No. Carol? It looks like, do you want to speak? Okay. Um, uh, okay. No. Uh, before you come to the podium, uh, I just want to go over some guidelines that would help you. Uh, first, <laughs> first, uh, please state your name and residence direct in the microphone. You're permitted to talk for three minutes on any item, whether it be agenda or not agendized in, uh, in the uh, agenda. Uh, if you wish to address the uh, commission, uh, please be watchful of the color of the lights, which once it turns yellow, that means you have 30 seconds to re remaining. And who do we have, Carol, for our first public comment? His name is Bob Miller. Bob Miller. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, talk uh, my right name is Bob Miller. Yes. I live in Lake Forest. In, uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. But uh, my comment was uh, is going to be about the, the booklet that you uh, <clears throat> mail out to the homeowners for all the uh, events that Believe people it. can participate in and in uh, special sports and stuff like that. Uh, I would like to recommend that you uh, think about putting in pickleball. Oh. Because I, I notice, you know, you have tennis, and I never see any – tennis happening anymore and so I would recommend uh, you know if we could advertise it and uh, you know get a group together I can get people together to teach people how to play it uh, I'd be more than happy to help with arrange that and uh, that'd be my only comment this evening so I'll keep it short well thank you I right. appreciate Thanks. your comment thank you very much uh, do we have anybody else Carol I have none. Maybe someone in the hallway so we don't see. There's a big crowd. The big crowd is trying to. <laughs> well, thank you. Hmm? Oh, comment, please. Hmm? Um, to address maybe a brief comment to Mr. Miller, I think the idea is, is a, a wonderful one. The problem right now, from our standpoint as a city, we don't have the facility. It's coming with Portola Park. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, staff might not be unwilling, call it that, to look at the places where it is being played in the city right now, which are like I know Lake Force One has courts and, and things like that. But I think when, hopefully, when Portola Park comes online <coughs> and <coughs> excuse me is opened, um, it's a suggestion that makes a lot of sense to utilize it. So, and thank you for your comment. Moving right along to the next part of the uh, a meeting today is uh, presentations, and there are no scheduled presentations at this point. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, minutes of the regular meeting of the Lake Forest Parks and Recreation Commission held on November 19th. Is there any changes, uh, amendments to the, the minutes published? Then we'll call for a vote for acceptance of the minutes. By Motion person. to approve. Well, let's have a motion first, please. That's what he said. Motion to approve. Well, is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Okay. That, so do I have to stay in because um, I wasn't here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I am officially abstaining. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Know, Please but, press oh, the uh, appropriate button.
to go. Well, and I did too. You, Rosenberg, were, you didn't push your button, Commissioner Rosenberg? No, yes, I did. Oh. 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 Okay. Well, then we will. We will. We do have a acceptance. It's a recount. Let's do it. <laughs> no. All right. Thank you. Everybody, ra raise your hand. Vote again. You know, th thank you very much. Okay, very good. One yeah. uh, Discussion action items, uh, annual report to the council. A review and comment on items to be presented, part of the commission's 2015 annual report to the city council, which is scheduled in January. I believe the, is it the 19th? Is that That's correct. Okay. So that is a discussion item. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, the Commission first considered this item and discussed this item at its meeting of October 15th. And as, as Chair Schur indicated, the Commission, the chair, chair of the Commission is scheduled to give this report to the City Council on January 19th. That's the second Council meeting in January. And I apologize, I was ill for this meeting, so I wasn't able to participate in the conversation. But in reviewing the minutes, I feel like, if I can use a sports analogy, I feel like the Commission got the ball on the goal line, I think you did a really good job of identifying things that might go in the report. Um, just to review what the council is requesting, it's a very brief report. It's a seven-minute report. It's an oral report. And they just ask simply that it be on two things. One is accomplishments of the commission, and then the commission can request guidance in any area you know, where you wish to seek guidance. And it seems from the minutes you didn't want to you definitely identified some things that you want to report on that were your accomplishments. Staff provided four of these um, that we felt were very important to the City Council. And then you came up with four of your own that I think were right on target that are also very important to the City Council. So I, I feel like you can include all of these if you want to agree on the content of the report. Um, just to review some of these, these pertain to designating Village Pond Park as, a, as uh, at risk of overcrowding of wildlife. That enabled the City Council and the City to enforce the wildlife ordinance there. Approval of the conceptual plans for Portola Park. That's allowed us to go forward. We're now uh, soliciting proposals for final design services. Approval of various recreation fees for the City Council's consideration. That will likely go back to the City Council the second meeting of January. And approval of the Community Services Department's sports tournament policy. And that's really where you gave guidance as to how we organize sports tournaments for whom and, and what the selection process is. And then on your own, the Commission added some, some excellent points that you might want to cover that inc include the growing popularity of special events. We have the example of Dino Days, the completion of park renovations at Tamarisk Park, which I think should be mentioned as part of a systematic $8 million effort to renovate multiple parks, the growth and success of the new adult softball program, and then Number four could be a discussion all on its own, but I think a really good way to summarize it, we're talking about recommendation regarding, regarding the direction of future programming, which I might concisely summarize as saying it's probably going to be based on two things. One would be uh, the construction of the new civic center that's going to include a, a senior center and a performing arts center. So those are obviously areas where we'll be looking at programming. And then the second thing that will guide our future programming would be um, trend analysis from the past year. And if I could sum that up, I would say that, um, you know, the department experienced an increase of 19% in attendance, and that correlated to a 62% increase, or actually produced a 62% increase in revenue. And most of those programs were tied to the opening of the sports park and the recreation center. And, you know, you can, it's very easy to list what those programs were. There were the adult sports leagues. Um, we have open gym hours, <coughs> increased attendance in our camp programs, which, by the way, those were, all, those were an existing program that we just expanded. Um, increased attendance in recreation classes, now that we have a new venue. Increased attendance in the teen lounge program. So I think bearing in mind that we have seven minutes to cram all of that in there, it sort of forces us to be concise. But, but looking at the content of what you discussed in your last meeting, I feel like all of the contents there is just a question as to whether everyone is in agreement or if there's something that you'd like to add. Um, and then once you reach a consensus this evening, my job would be to work with the chair just to summarize things and, and kind of format things into a nice, concise report for the city council. Comment? 
I was thinking, one of the big things that we do is, is the parade. You know, and just mention how, you know, how it's, you know, attendance increases every year. We have, you know, anyway, that's a big, that's a big thing that draws a lot of people. I just think it's a good thing to, I mean, you don't have to go on it, about it. But it's you excellent. To, yeah, I, I, like I think it. that when we talk about the parade, we had about 10,000 people watching this year, which I understand was more than any other year. Here you mentioned Dino Days. We had more for Dino Days than any other year. I think it's an easy way to summarize all of that is just to say we, we're experiencing an increase in attendance in almost all of our special events because of the high quality. Is it, is it possible, to, for, to the Loretta's point, I don't, when we give the report to the council, the written report, to maybe just have a table with some of those events, like the Bunny Blast, I know that thing's blowing up, um, the, the, the Haunt is blowing up. I mean, there's, there's so many people attending those. Um, uh, what's it? Oh, it's Snowfest. Good gracious. You know, I mean, that, so you have, so maybe if you just put a, a quick table in the report that just lists under this, because I think this is a great category of growing popularity of special events, and then just list them and then just say, here's, here's the increase. And, sure. you know, and, and yeah, that's a good idea. I, I think that's a concise way to present it without going through a list, right? Because every event seems to be growing right now. And so I think that would, if, if, if that's okay with you, if, if I get consensus on that, I think that might be a good way to, to do it. So I think Loretta is right on. And that Absolutely. Be well, to add, if I can, to that comment, because <clears throat> we already had consensus on it. I remember bringing it up in different words at the last time, and I think the meeting you, you missed, to have that as back, background uh, information to provide uh, you know, an emphasis for uh, some facts, really, for what we're doing that back up the verbiage. I think we kind of all agreed, you know, to do that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'll second it again or third it or yeah. uh, consent to it. I think we should do that um, because then that's where the proof of the pie is, mm -hmm. that they can actually look and say, well, they're, you know, just not kidding. Because, again, one of the things that we would face or anybody else would face uh, when it comes down to the end of the day, it's that four-letter word called budget. And you have to justify rationally. I mean, that's like any business, the expenditure of money. Mm -hmm. And just to say, hey, we need more money, we need to do this um, without any, any factual basis. And I think one of the things community services can point to uh, is that relationship overall with quality of life and the fact that the numbers show that there is an ongoing and increasing acceptance of what we're doing, which is based on the quality of the programs. The other little caveat, and I think we can start it hopefully with verbiage uh, in there, is to look at somewhere in the report expressing the desire, and that'll take time to bring it to fruition, of course, of even with the existing facilities, take your example you mentioned, when the Civic Center, the Senior Center, and all those facilities come online, that opens up the world. I mean, that, that's kind of a no-brainer period. But in the interim, and even going on to program things that are new to concern to what we're doing in the past and don't necessarily require a new facility. And that's kind of the antithesis to um, what you sometimes hear in my humble opinion, from not only the council, but from people that are in attendance or who comment, they say, well, enough enough with the sports stuff. We've got enough sports fields. Well, it's not only sports fields that these facilities can support. Uh, they can support a whole bunch of other uh, activities for all different age levels, which I think we should capitalize on, which then comes down again to that budget question in the end, that we need to start making cases for activities or programs that we can suggest, we can, with staff time, do some research and see if they make sense. Because I think 90% of what we do is very similar to what a lot of other cities do. I mean, that's a, a logical thing. The biggest difference is we do them a lot better. A um, little example, I know Ron loves the dinosaur, the Star Wars, the... the which was creation of Dino Days, which is unique. But when he brought it to Heritage Hill as part of the long time ongoing Halloween events, it was another draw. 
it was another reason to come there because to a point you look at Halloween, you look at Victorian Christmas, you look at um, the candlelight walk and it sometimes comes down to after a while, it's same old, same old. I've done it for seven years. Am I going to see anything new? Is there a reason? Well, maybe let's not go or, or whatever. But maybe if there are some new features that are so I'm trying to go integrated into those existing very staple events that come on or with the facilities we have, we could get newer people, more people, some specific interests uh, and things like that. And eventually it comes down to getting the financing for it. So it's like every time we hopefully can present things to state the case for us um, that the basis of it is just not we want more fields, but we want more programming, which in its own way, and that requires funding. So if we can add that and kind of keep that going throughout the year, I think we, we have a good chance of increasing what we do. Very good input. Uh, I, I want to get back to what Scott is focused on is, is the objectives of the report to encompass not only accomplishments but also talk about futures. Uh, we, we got the City Hall uh, coming up. We, we got a number of programming that is taking off. And also the third element I, I don't want us to overlook if we have an opportunity of soliciting input from the City Council or any feedback or guidance to us, I, I don't want to lose that window of opportunity of giving, uh, getting feedback because we don't have that opportunity frequently to have a, uh, to get some type of reaction or feeling or uh, whatever we decide to solicit from the City Council. Now we only have seven minutes, so we can't turn this into a marathon. So we got to be careful. Uh, question, are, are, are they going to get a briefing paper ahead of time on, on whatever we're going to be talking about? They'll receive an agenda report, and it will, it, will, it will succinctly outline what you'll be discussing. Basically, it's going to outline the content of the report. So I'm going to do my best to summarize these objectives that you've some of which staff has identified, or whatever you accept this evening. So some of the staff has identified, some of the commission has identified, and then some of what was, is being discussed now. I think the look, the look forward to the future. So they'll have examples or detail that we don't necessarily have to delve into it Correct. as much, yeah. but we want to get to the essence of the major right. points, particularly on the accomplishments and some of the other elements. I think what was presented in the briefing paper we have in front of us is excellent. I think that does cover quite a bit of not all the elements. Uh, the other element that I was struggling with, and I was talking to staff a little bit about it, do we want to put together a PowerPoint summary of, of amplifying what we're presenting? Uh, I, I need some uh, guidance on that one to determine if it's something that would be important. Or so the, the idea behind the PowerPoint was more of a visual tool than it would be the normal everyday PowerPoint where it would be a bullet point of things for you to speak about. So we have thousands and thousands of pictures from the past year that we would do basically like a slideshow in a PowerPoint version that the, the pictures would be rotating as you were speaking. So there would be some visual things going on other than you highlighting the items you're, you So post. this would be a pictorial net net. Yes. Not mm -hmm. necessarily narratives, but exactly. showing an example of when we mention uh, an element, it would have a representation. Of right. It. And, and it would just continually rotate. You wouldn't have to stop and look oh, at it okay. and say all something. Right. So I don't have to talk to no. the slide. Okay. No. That's cool. So we would just use all of the great pictures we have to show people loving our programs, people at the parks, people at the sports park, people, seniors here and just use those as highlights to help as a visual tool for the information that you're giving them about right. how our programs have grown. So are we being asked to, to review what was presented tonight on the briefing paper and make sure that we're in consensus that these are the <coughs> elements that, that we would be presenting? Is that correct? That, that's correct. And I think how you communicate this, because you only have seven minutes, I think 
is more of an art than a science because it's really a lot to pack into seven minutes. So I, I have a good idea of what I can put into the written report. Yeah, okay. And, and I can help you develop an outline, you know, as the presenter to capture as much of this as possible. But I think it can definitely be done within seven minutes. All right. I, I mean, for me, uh, it will take seven minutes to say hello, how are you? you know, <laughs> I got plenty of verbiage, but I want to keep it brief and to the point. And I don't want to go off on a tangent or get too much detail. So I do want to cover all the salient points. So uh, are you thinking of developing a script, or are you going to leave it up to the chair to determine how best to present that? I, I, can, assist, I can assist the chair in any way that, that you wish. So normally what I would do is I, prov I would provide an outline. And if you'd, like to, if you'd like me to write out a script, I can do that also. It's, it's really well, I'll look for some guidelines work. because I want to make sure we don't miss any element or any important aspect that the commission has agreed is important that we need to verbalize. So uh, I think we've discussed the important points, have we not? Uh, Let me, uh, uh, if, with your permission, a couple of additions. Um, I think the visual part is mandatory, personally. Uh, you got too many people who get up with some kind of a, in this case called staff report or corporate community called some kind of a business report and it's just some words and a piece of paper that's thrown out and uh, it does not have the same effect as if it's backed up or complemented by, by visuals because a lot of people, their comprehension is much more visual than the verbal, verbal input. So I think uh, that, that's kind of a must. Um, what I'm hearing now is that the chair will be talking because I thought from listening to some of the comments that wouldn't be, which I would think would be, <coughs> excuse me, absolutely the wrong thing because of what, you know, you need to have whoever the chair is in a given year be the advocate for the organization, which I think is a, a must. Again, in, in the corporate world, what we're going to do, we're going to present what's called an executive summary. And taking and Loretta can complement the number of years we have done something like this uh, in, in this environment and I will supplement it with the, the corporate life that I have had the opportunity to lead is that's something short because you have X amount of minutes, hours maybe to do something but the key thing is what comes after it that there is the data for those that it's being presented to to look at and to digest. And that's why I'm really strongly advocating that there is as much collateral material in the staff report to, I don't want to say wow the reader, but that there is some substance to it. Because otherwise, again, okay, that was nice, move on, you know, on and on. Um, similar things like this, and I'm quoting, and, and Loretta, if you disagree, you can please speak up, is typically the reaction to something like this for a lot of years had been receive and file, I guess the typical term that's used, as opposed to taking some action. And the, I keep coming back to the $8 million generation, which was based on a very well put together with a lot of visuals in it report. We didn't use the PowerPoint, we didn't use that, but it had a tremendous amount of visuals in there, a tremendous amount of pertinent detail. Um, and uh, again, that's coming back to that detail. It got us as a group, as a department, the largest allocation in 20 years, netting it out, 20 years worth, that went to <coughs> community services to develop you know, our, our resources. And I think after for many years hearing how important, and I'm not denigrating it by, by this statement, how important and expensive police services is and how important and expensive other things are, I would love to see it that it gets the point that some of the discussion from the dais on the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month is how important and expensive but as positive community services is. That the undertone to all of this needs to be uh, something that is very vibrant, that is growing, that is accepted by the community. The community wants more, if we can even justify that. Um, that when it comes down to it, 
there isn't that hesitation to, you know, oh, let's see if we can take a department and cut 5%, whether it's across the board or a single department, making that kind of a statement. If you were to take that into a well-running corporation, you would be laughed out of the room, quite frankly, the, the truth to it. Um, but that you may take it away from Peter and give to Paul because Paul deserves it. That would make more sense, and I'd like to see community services be that department that is looked at as having justified the need for more and the need to be listened to. So it's it's a long process, and uh, you know I know community services is well thought of by other departments and and by the various people who served on the council uh, and things like that. But I'm not sure, and it took me over a decade personally to realize really how important a part these programs play in the lives of people. And that's a very underlying um, way of, of, you can't really put real numbers, it's a very hard thing to put numbers to, but it does in a positive way affect people. That people look forward to this, they will come out to it, um, and once they see the quality again that we have, and I think the quality of our program should be emphasized here in as well, that there is that realization that when community services comes, especially during the budgetary cycles, that it's not something that, well, we can just disregard that, we can disregard that, we can disregard that. And this is a catalyst, a key thing, at least on an annual basis, to kind of, quote, in your face, that type of thing. So. Very good. Um, can, I just, can I just one quick comment? I promise I'll be quick. This year is going to be a very interesting year in 2016. And, and I'm, I would like to ask for the slideshow as much as possible without taxing the staff too much. When we put the pictures up, can we avoid putting, how do I say this, and I, council members and commissioners in the pictures? Yeah. I, I think in because general, I don't want that to be. We generally do. Yeah. We don't, yeah. yeah. I, but but, but I, I just think we need, this year in particular, I don't want this to become political leverage for, you know, about who attends what. Uh, it, it's, I want the focus to be on what Victor is presenting because I think it's important. And, and to Jim's point, I think it's very important. So um, it, it, that would just be a, a recommendation that I would make. It, it, and, and I know I don't. Again, I don't want to overtax the staff, but if that's possible, that would be great. Oh, it's, very, it's very possible. Yes. Okay. I, I'm going to add. Community services is the department that improves the quality of life for our residents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I remember that's, the healthy services, right? Yeah, so, yeah, that's really what it comes down to, and you can't put a price on that. Quality of life in our in our town is wonderful, and we want to keep it that way. So there you go. Here's yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to have input back based on an earlier comment that I would like to include in the presentation, which is soliciting um, guidance and input from the city council. Essentially, my vision is we will have maybe five minutes of formal. Uh, presentation of accomplishments and salient points but I also want to reserve two minutes because we only have what seven or eight minutes I forget okay. seven minutes to get feedback from the City Council and I want to make sure how we want to approach that in such a way we will get um, some type of reaction or comment from the City Council do we direct it through questioning techniques? Do we keep it open-ended and just ask the city council for their input? Do we give them some structure to uh, comment on? So uh, I'm, I'm looking for some guidance here as well from the commission and staff if we were to open up that door for that type of dialogue. Mr. Chair, it can be, it can, it can be as simple when you finish your presentation as asking the city council, is there anything you would, especially you'd like us to focus on this keep year? It, yeah. We'll keep it, it simple. Be, it can be that Just simple as you'd like up, it to up be. Upfront, yeah. open ended for input, right. and then let them decide what they would like to uh, comment. Yeah, because if we get into too many topics that aren't agendized, it right. can get weird, right? right? And so I think that's, that's the best So we'll keep it as an open the other, forum. The other point, Vic, it's a good point, is you only have 
with the timeline two minutes. That's correct. And if you've been to any kind of meeting, period. <laughs> yes. No, I'm not, only, I'm, not, I'm not just talking I, about I council meetings. Where you're you know, going. Yeah. But any meeting, to get five people, whether it's you know a meeting at one Trump Plaza or a meeting here or five people in a coffee shop, it's not enough time for everybody to get there. In. But I think it's the overture that counts that uh, maybe it is even that you make the suggestion, I, I'm going to look to our director for uh, some guidance there too, that, uh, that maybe it's a statement that the commission is interested in the council's, um, I don't have the right words, right, wants, needs, direction, whatever, that then can be brought down as opposed to one of them, quickest one to the microphone, your two minutes are gone. I mean, two minutes is nothing. Well, and we get on one one issue, and maybe then one other says, yeah, I agree. And then the others say, well, uh, you know, we don't want that. Then suddenly the whole thing drags out, and, and we've lost. It becomes another three to two or, or well, whatever. The question is, should I, I even should leave the door open? Well, I was going to say, the, should the we open that door? Well, I think or should we control it or manage it? I, yeah, I think it manage it, as I said, open the door, but let's have a process in there by which they can come back, just like we would upscale information to them, that they can come back through the staff and download information to us sure. as to what they would like to do. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the process is in place, so... Um, and then that creates that at the end of, let's say, the community services report, the feeling of the everybody in the room was, well, that was a bust, you know, and just another nothing. Well, uh, we let me let me let me play this back. Are, the point is, give an opportunity for input for guidance, but they can do it through the city manager, not yeah, necessarily true. verbalizing, because right. it's not supposed to be a discussion. Right. When you don't have the time. We don't want to turn it into a discussion, right. although there's a, a likelihood that it could it very could, well yeah, be. Yeah, don't do that. But if we give the opportunity for input and guidance that mm -hmm. they could refer back to, to staff, uh, that would be most helpful to us kind of thing. I mean, is that, yeah. that make sense? Would that workable? Yep. I think that works. Yep. Okay, then that's what we'll, the way we'll position it. You know, with a short amount of time we have. So, would you like us to? Do we need to make a motion on this, or uh, if we wanted to accept what was presented, do you need no, it, a motion? Uh, or are, I, we, are we in agreement? I don't. I think we have consensus. I think that we have consensus. Yeah, my understanding is that it's it's the objectives that are listed in here. I'll incorporate the comments that we heard this evening. We'll definitely put more into the written report, and and the oral report will be more of an executive summary. Um, I would ask for staff assistance, and I appreciate you volunteering uh, to help in this endeavor, that I want to include a dry run on this. Sure. And just to make sure that all the elements come together in a satisfactory way, and I'll be willing to invest the time uh, with your help from the staff to, to do that. So when our, our turn comes up, then we'll, we'll keep it within the time limit and make sure all the points are commented on. <coughs> We can arrange that. Absolutely. Very well. So if there's any other comments, are we, no. we, we are in agreement. So we can move on to the next item of the agenda, which is the recreational report coming up, the 2015 November recreational report. Chair and Commissioners, I have highlights for the month of November. Uh, the first one being the opening of the Barker Ranch Dog Park, which was a wonderful day. Um, that was on November 24th. And uh, this, the opening of the park now adds another facility to our, to our park system, making it the 30th park for the park system itself, and the only dog park, but we know we're looking forward to another dog park up in Portola Hills. Um, and we have gotten lots of great feedback so far about the um, dog park, people who have used it. There was um, management services did a, a photo contest pictures from the dog park and they had their winners uh, they had two people that were winners that they came in today and pick up their gifts and one of the people brought his dog with him so that was very nice and he said he really likes the park um, so that was highlight one of the great highlights for the month of November another one would be the teen advisory board the ACT 
They had a food collection that started in the month of October and ran through November. They collected 310 pounds of food for the South County Outreach to help the families during the holiday season. And uh, South County Outreach was very appreciative of that and sent a letter back to the Teen Advisory Committee saying thank you so much. Really appreciative. Um, and that's something, that's a new, um, they haven't done a food drive like that before, so it was really great to have them do that. Participate. Yeah, lots of participation. Um, at the skate park, they had the, listen to this number, 12th annual, 12th annual for their Fall Classic Street and Flow Skateboard Contest. I keep, when I hear that, I keep thinking, really 12 years? Yeah. That's crazy. And always um, very well attended, over 400 spectators. They had um, competitors from ages 4 to 40 that were part of the divisions. Sponsors this year were um, Spitfire Wheels, Expedition One Skateboards, of course, Etnies, Focus Board Shop, Cliff Bar for Kids, and actually Cliff Bar for Kids is one that we've had for quite some time. They have a banner that they put up at the park, and for our summer um, camp program, that's part of the snacks the kids get, or Cliff Bars. Um, and also at the skate park, um, a picture was included in the PNR packet of the great anniversary logo um, that is up at the park that will be up in um, the skatable area for the rest of the year. We have two more of those logo logos that are going to be put up. Uh, one, we're still going to put one up at the sports parks in the community center. So there will be a big 25-year anniversary logo put up there and uh, possibly one here at City Hall as well. Um, the last one I wanted to highlight was our senior activities was a Thanksgiving celebration here at the Senior Center. Uh, once again, record number of people, 155 seniors participated in the annual, annual Thanksgiving celebration. They had the pie eating contest and uh, they had eight people who took part in it um, eating whipped cream trying to find the pumpkin seeds at the bottom. Lots of laughter. I think I've told you before my office is right above here. And it's always great to hear on Thursdays when they're all having a great time. Um, the seniors all were very appreciative of the great lunch as they normally are, and they gave out um, gift certificates to Target as well. The last two items I wanted to highlight would be coming up in the month of January. Snowfest registration is coming up January 6th to 8th, and that is at the sports park. Last year we had a record sellout. Um, we anticipate the same coming up this year, and then Snowfest will be on January 23rd this year. That's my report for the month of November. I'd be very happy to answer any questions if you have anything from the uh, report itself. Thank you. I have a, a comment. Um, I, I, I get very complimentary feedback from people who have been on the uh, special trips. <laughs> oh, great. And it's not the trip that really is complimented. It's the execution and the quality all the way starting from the, the bus, and the beautiful types of buses that you have to make it comfort, all the way to the program. And and uh, there was, in specific terms, there was a field trip to a, a, a movie studio, a, I forget what it was, for filming mm -hmm. somewhere, and it was very good and well attended. And I also have heard about the trips to the casinos and to other sites, I think uh, Loretta has participated in. Uh, whoever is handling that should have kudos as far as the execution. I will pass along to the staff. Please pass that on mm -hmm. uh, to your uh, uh, court. Is it coordinator? Is that the proper mm -hmm. title? Under your senior activities yeah. is by far, I, I think, is truly a, a, an excellent program that should continue and be expanded, uh, you know, because I do feel, although attendance I know is always a, a measurement, mm -hmm. but I think it's the, the, the people who do participate in it is, uh, they walk away with a very good feeling. Oh, good. Thank that. you so much. The, the other item I want to mention is that I think there were three of us at the Barker uh, dedication, mm -hmm. myself. I think we were all there. Four of us. The four of us. I think yeah. all four of us were there. Francisco was there. Yeah, Francisco. Yeah. I think we're, did we have everybody or we're just, yep. did we have everybody there? Okay. And I was very impressed uh, with the park. It's our 30th, it's the 30th park that we have and the only park uh, 
that we have uh, to as a dog park mm -hmm. that's fully managed uh, by ourselves. So that must be a, a learning curve as well, I would assume. Oh, Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, to get our arms around all the particulars and get the feedback from the community. I, I was curious how you handle um, licensing and vaccination uh, certification. Has that come up, or you already have something in place? You know, it's actually, it's not, it's not the responsibility of community services department. Um, people are supposed to license and vaccinate their dogs. We don't really have any way to control that at all, anywhere in the city, um, particularly in the dog park. I, I'm not suggesting there's a problem here. I was just wanted, wanted to know if it's something that's in the back of, uh, of staff's considerations or, or it's just not something that you're considering now. It, it's not something that we've been asked to consider at this point. And if, if it were something that city staff were directed to, to address, it would probably be through the animal control contract that we have, animal control officers. Victor, to add a comment to your comment, the only city I think in Orange, Orange let's say Southern Orange County, uh, that has a control mechanism is Costa Mesa. Um, they have a area in one of, off of one of their parks that they found out that nothing will grow there. So that's their dog park. Um, but they had a, I think a case where somebody got bitten or, or whatever they do. So now the only way you get access or egress to it is through a card key, which doesn't mean that somebody couldn't sneak in when somebody else does, but that's the way they control to get the card key. You have to have the dog licensed and vaccinated. But again, they're the only city that does that. So it probably in the end is more more expense than it's worth because you just don't hear of of issues because those are issues that would make newspapers and patches and voice of orange counties and things like that that's not probably that big a problem the other uh, thank you that's that's good to know the other question is, is a good segue on Portola we're also they're going to have a dog park is it going to be patterned pretty close to what was happening what we have at the Barker Ranch or is it going to be different it's actually going to be much larger so so Barker Ranch is about I believe 41,000 square feet uh, I believe it's it's around half an acre maybe and the dog park at Portola is going to be about 0.88 acres so it's almost twice as big it's much larger um, it will be similar in that it will have a large you know, area for large dogs, large area for small dogs. I've learned a few things now based on this experience on how to better design the entry point into the dog park. So that's, I'm not the only one. I think the whole organization has. So that'll probably be done a little, little bit better. It's part of the learning curve. I would part of the learning curve, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's understandable. Is that going to be a city-run facility as well? It is. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be like Barker, Barker Dog Park in that it won't really be staffed. It'll be a passive park, but um, people can go in through the gates and take their dogs well, to that's play. That's what I was getting at. City run means it's not going to be staffed, right? It's Correct. It's going to be open. Correct. Yeah, it's going to be open. Very good. Okay, that's all I have. Anybody else? I have a question. Um, speaking of the Barker Dog Park, the opening is phenomenal, by the way. I had such a good time. Um, one of our residents came up to me, and she's, this is this week she said that um, <clears throat> there's like a, a group of rocks there in the middle, mm -hmm. and it seems like the dogs all seem to know and do number one there. And she said, is that designed on purpose? And I said, I don't know. I'll ask. It's part of the drainage fe feature. Oh, and okay. It's mostly the drainage that's connected to the drinking fountain that's, that's right next to Oh, okay. Yeah. But she was just so surprised that they all kind of knew to go to. Well, and they marked. They're marking yeah. as well. They're marking their territory? Mm -hmm. Is that what? Yeah. Well, one does number one, the other ones go yeah. and do number one on the top of that. Right, right. But it was just kind of like, yeah. well, how nice they're just doing it there and not Very on nice. the turf. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, yeah. See, we could say we did that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it was a good report. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Any other comments on the report? All right. Well, very good. Thank you so much. It was well done, as always. We're going to, uh, we don't have any other uh, special um, uh, agenda items, so we can move right into commission comments. Uh, there's no director's report I'm aware of. Is that correct? Just one, one brief item. Um, you've probably seen the meeting minutes done in several different ways. I think the last meeting, they were about 15 pages long. This, this time, they're a little bit shorter. They're about four minutes. Carol's been doing an awesome job. 
what we're going to start doing, we're going to start doing what are known as action minutes. They're a little bit more concise. They're, they're modeled after what the city council does. So they basically they're going to have exactly what the motion was, how it was approved. It may contain a little bit less information about all of the dialogue. It'll probably just generally loosely characterize what the dialogue was and what the discussion was. Um, so I just wanted to give you a heads up and let you know that, that you might see a little bit, bit of a change there. Thank you. <clears throat> Oh, thank you. Uh, we're going to go right into commission comments, and we'll start with uh, Commissioner Workmeister. Okay. Well, again, great report, um, and uh, just another good month. Um, I don't have a lot today, so I'm just going to say, you know, hope everyone has a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, whatever you celebrate, Happy Holidays, and I appreciate the Millers coming out, and and we we never forget about you. Don't ever think we do, but we. But you're always welcome. And so, I again, just want to thank the staff for a great year. I mean, it's it's when you look at all the accomplishments we've done. And I think, I, I think, the chairman's challenge is going to be to fit everything in seven minutes because it was a very good year and it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of learning. Um, I, I love this pressure here. Yeah, well, it's easy on the vice chair, so it's it's an open. But anyway, so so I hope everyone has a happy holidays and, and hope everyone gets better. Boy, it sounds like we've got like the sick crew all over here. <laughs> so, well, well, thank, thank you, you guys again, though. Uh, Commissioner Heron. Ooh, okay. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to apologize that I did not make it to the la well. I made it to the last meeting, but it was already over. Um, I, I I could not miss my legal ethics class because it was reviewed for final, and so and of course it took longer than we all thought, and you had a shorter meeting. So I'm sorry I missed it. Um, anyway, I just wanted to bring up, I had the opportunity to go to Arizona, the Scottsdale area, with my parents, and checked out some of the senior centers there. And they have now switched, at least in the Mesa, Scottsdale area, they call them active adult centers and not senior centers. They did that a couple of years ago, and they seem to like that. Um, and the, the facility that I looked at, they had four classrooms, but they were partitioned, so if you needed more room, you could, you know, I was just getting ideas for our own center. Um, they had a great lobby reading room slash library, which was very nice. Um, and they also had the, in the back, they had the facility to do the Meals on Wheels. I don't know if we're thinking about putting that in ours or not. Okay, that's good. And they also, uh, they had like a cap, a big room, which was, I guess, their cafeteria, stage, everything, and my mom and dad ballroom dance, so they were tripping that rug like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> um, but the one thing I did notice there is they did not have an area for storage of their extra tables and chairs. So that's something I want to make sure that we do, you know, because they were kind of like off to the side, but they were there. Um, and they also had some really nice, they had enough administrative offices for staff. They actually had four pool tables, a little cafe, and they. Uh, one of the things I noticed that they did, they called it loser bingo. And um, at the end, the, the grand prize is a lump of coal. <laughs> so I don't know if that's something. Maybe I was talking to Karen about it today, and she said maybe that would be a good April Fool one. <laughs> I know that good. Um, and then also the, um, the California Association of Park and Rec Commissioners and Board Members. Um, I have information on their 2016 educational tour, which is open to all, all of us. Um, it's going to be May 15th through May 21st, and it's going to be at the, uh, it's going to include Little Petroglyph Canyon, which is near Ridgecrest, and, um, and also they're going to do a tour to Death Valley Mon National Monument. Um, it, uh, you know, and apparently we have to give special permission because it's a Naval Air Weapons Station, China Lake stuff. So, um, but... I've been on these tours before, and they are so phenomenal because the gentleman that puts them together really pulls in everybody that he knows to get us the best access behind the scenes information. Like when we did the Bodhi trip, he literally asked the, the former director that just retired to come and give us the personal tour. And I, I, oh, you want to see the sheriff's office or the jail? Here, I've got the key for that. Oh, you want to go in the bar? Sure. You want to see the school? Sure. Oh, the same room, right? No, oh, no, okay. no. They were all different Sorry. buildings, and people were walking by, going, "Can we come in?" And we're like, "No, you can't come in because this is for this private tour." And so they really, really go all out to treat, you know, to show you everything. And um, 
we, I actually got to see the uh, California archives when we went on that trip, which that's not open to the public. No. I mean, that is like a vast, I don't even know how big that building is, of all of our California history. It was phenomenal. But anyway, so I'm sure that this will be of the same caliber. So if anybody wants the info, I already emailed it to you. I'll, I'll be happy to email you the info okay. on that. Um, okay, so I went through that. I, atten I have to kind of back up a month because I missed last month. I attended that Lake Forest Special Needs Dance, which was a lot of fun. Their costume one, that was really good. Because then I, um, of course, I attended the Thanksgiving and the Christmas Senior Center uh, luncheons and stuff. And, of course, the, when the El Toro High School Choir comes, it's just phenomenal. phenomenal. And we had the, the Dickens Carolers today. They were so good. Of course, the White Elephant Gift Exchange is always entertaining. I also went uh, breakfast with Santa. I have to comment. The staff did a really good job. I mean, they actually got the guys, the young rec leaders, to dress up as the elves and hang out with Santa and do the, you know, some book stories. I'm um, of course Heritage Hill. I got to go to the Victorian Christmas and the Candlelight one, and that that is always so fantastic. I was, I think I already told you this, but they actually dropped a bus of thirty people off for that night. I was like, wow. There are a number of buses that. Uh, yeah, I was that, really. I was that organized uh, yeah. first, uh, once a year to come to the, those events. Yeah, yeah, and then um, at Eastgate Park. Uh, I, wound up, I went to the anniversary thing, but it wound up being rescheduled because of the rain. So I hope you guys will let us know when it is so we can come, because I, I was looking forward to that. Um, I also went to the, was it the Christmas Ugly Sweater Bunko event, and that was that was fun. I was really surprised how many men dressed in their ugly sweaters. Or actually, they didn't look ugly. To me, they were very nice. But anyway, um, and I also wanted to comment. Uh, one of the seniors today, after the lunch, had came up and said, she said, I want you to know you're doing it right. You're doing it right in regards to the senior center. Um, you know, she likes to come on Thursday. She likes the social aspect. She does not like to play bingo. But um, she really wanted to comment us on what a great job we're doing. And I just wanted to pass. And she was very, very sweet and sincere about that. Um, also, oh, uh, Kiwanis. Uh, my son's a Kiwanian. And in their magazine, I was looking through it. They have an article called Planting a Seed, and it is all about a special needs gardening program. Yeah. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be a win-win-win? And you know where. So um, I don't know if you want, maybe we can make, do you want a copy of the article? Okay. All right. I'm sorry, I don't know. We could check. But it's like a like a four or five page art. I mean, look, they got all these pictures about it. You know, and I just I saw that and I went, wow, that is something we got to stick in the back of the head there for future use when we're, we're talking about that other thing. And then I was going through a bunch of stuff and I came across a fall 1998 leaflet. And this is how big it was. This is it. Uh, yeah, it's very small. Some redevelopment news, and they talked about teen trip to Dots, Park Safari, Neighborhood Park Youth Program, Senior Citizen Bus Excursion, Autumn Harvest Festival, and the Holiday Craft Festival. Yeah, so I just I just thought that was kind of fun to bring that in. It's like, hey, look how far we have advanced, and we should be so proud of, of all the work that you guys have done. And I just want to say, you know, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah to everybody. Um, it's been a wonderful year. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, I also have cookies for you. <laughs> Commissioner Rosenberg. Thank you. Um, since this is the holiday season, the party season or something, I just want to let everybody on the day know. I opened the mail. And uh, I was curious what it was, and we all missed a good party. Oh, we just got it now. We just got it now. And this, is, this is interesting, you know, again. Uh, you hear the stuff on the county, you know, and uh, you have to RSVP by the first of a month. It's mailed on the 25th of November, which was the day before Thanksgiving, meaning it didn't go anywhere on the 26th. It sat there while the post office closed. So it maybe came out on the Friday or probably over the weekend, which means it was probably received here because it's City Hall on Monday. The 30th, with one day for our mainstay support person to maybe 
have to look at what it is to distribute it to whatever. So um, I, I move we get consensus on, and I'll be happy to write the letter to Ms. Bartlett uh, requesting that the four of us would like to have a glass of wine with her at this Newport winery. Okay. It does not need to be in the minutes. That's just my <laughs> the, Okay, that was my personal touch. And as somebody near and dear to me says, you're a four-year-old in a grown man's body. But okay, I accept that. Um, on, on a semi more serious note, the uh, starting with the dog park, echoing comments, uh, very well done. Um, the, you know, I think all the dogs that were there have inaugurated, and uh, again, all of the uh, I hate to bring this up, but the pre negative commentary. Um, it would be nice to see if somebody would have the gumption to say, you know, it really turned out well. It's a, it's a good facility. Um, yeah, size matters, but this is a lot better than having nothing at all. And we've been back a couple of times, and interesting enough, it's not overcrowded. Uh, one time during a week and one time during a weekend. And, uh, you know, it's fine. We'll have another one with Portola, and I would say the challenge there would be to eventually find something on the, call it, other end of town which should more than satisfy uh, the needs because so many people even when you have them don't use them. that's you know they have reasons why not and they're very valid but again it was well done I think again the selection of the uh, covering the turf is the right answer to go uh, it's much better on the on the animals and their feet and uh, their comfort and with the technology we have now in 2015 it's not going to stink or come up or burn them the way the the older technology does. I think we hit a home run with that one there. Um, a, a nice event um, and kudos to Scott uh, with his role in taking Rob outside of the building uh, so he didn't know he would have a retirement party uh, a few weeks ago and uh, I I asked him about it and it was so his answer was so typical of uh, of Rob uh, where I said, well, did, didn't you, you know, what did you think when Scott asked you to come out, go go out and look at some parks? It was well, it just Furniture. went. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, if it had been my, the day I was, my last day in retiring, and the, I might have questioned it. What good is my input going to do? I'm not going to be here anymore. What do you care, you know, <laughs> or whatever. But, uh, uh, again, you know, I just wanted to make a, a comment. Uh, I didn't realize it had been 16 years, you know, how, how quickly time has flown. And uh, it, it was a nicely done event. And, uh, again, kudos to those that, uh, that put it on. Victorian Christmas, the, the candlelight walk, as usual, uh, were very, very spectacular. They're, they're very well done. But reemphasizing that one comment I made in relation to our uh, commission report and things like that and a couple of comments from just passing by people as you listen to what their conversations are we need to find something new to augment it not to change it not to get rid of it not to do anything like that because a number of comments of conversation that well let's go well, we haven't been here. We just got here. Well, we've seen it all, and it's still kind of the same thing. It's very nice, but um, and uh, just watching some people that came in with us both times, um, we kind of by the, not by design. We followed one of them around, and they left very. They did kind of a quick loop. It was obviously it was the same again. It's great. It's it's wonderful, um, especially if you're a first timer. It's, it's actually not. It's not a city event, though. No, I know right. that. I, okay. I, I, okay. I fully know that it's Orange County parks and, right. and, and things like that. Um, basically, the bottom line has nothing to do with the city of Lake Forest except that it resides in our city limits. But maybe, again, because sure they bring some buses and they do that, but the majority of the people come from Lake Forest, to just kind of give them some feedback. And I, you know, I don't know if that's unacceptable or not, to, you know, it would be to their benefit, and then again, that translates to the benefit of our residents having something, you know, a little different. But that's just, again, a suggestion. I guess 
we now have got it down. We can go quickly through the, the tour and then go have dinner at the majestic file up the up the you know up the road there. So it you know um, the the senior Thanksgiving lunch. To comment on that, I learned something too. Being one of the eight that was, I don't say I was conscripted. I was asked, and I said sure, why not? Because it looked like fun. Um, I found out that having a mustache is very detrimental to finding the pumpkin seed in that. Uh, I'm still waiting for the picture because someone said you had whipped cream all over your face and um, to prove it. So, but it, again, the fun thing was really not just the fun I had. I had a ball doing it, but seeing all the other people who were. I mean, it was almost like the the representative of, of the table, the table cheering them on, uh, people taking pictures. It was just like, obviously you hear the noise upstairs because they were having um, a good time and I'll echo the comment of kudos to uh, Brenda and her whole group uh, who uh, keep it going. Uh, Brenda should get a special kudu for today. Um, you can ask her about some of her verbal skills and presentations. and. But you know what? It was great. It, it, it was human. It, it, and I don't think anybody was, um, and she, she does it so well, she, I mean, how she reacted. Uh, it's it just, the people there, it, be, it becomes very obvious, they have a good time. It, it's not just, okay, at least I have somewhere to go, but they enjoy coming there. They kind of look forward to coming there for a variety of reasons. And as was exemplified, as Loretta said, by that lady who came over and um, shared her comments with both of us. And very, very, very sincere, and you know, we're doing wonderful there, and hopefully we can do more you know, and, and better with it. Um, uh, the comment made on the part on the uh, I'm sorry, the the senior tours and their buses. Uh, I just happened to be here a couple of weeks ago, and this coach was sitting out there, yeah, and uh, yeah. it was like. I wanted to get on the bus. I didn't want. I didn't care where they were going. I've seen the coaches the NFL teams use. Um, that one's as good, if not better. So you know, if that's the normal coach, maybe what we should do is not publicize the destination that much, but the means of transportation, because that that again, it's just a cut above. It, it symbolizes what we what we stand for. Um, uh, you know, again, there were. We did brunch with Santa. Brunch was as good as breakfast uh, as far as Santa, the elves. Um, again, having spent more time over at the, at the sports park, and the mold of the coordinator that actually gets hired. Um, there's somebody has a, a wonderful formula put together because they all kind of fit into a extremely positive how can we help? And they make everybody feel comfortable. And uh, great hiring. And you know, whoever kind of puts the final blessing. Well, there, there's some some chemistry that may not be publicized, which is okay. But again, somebody should say thank you to them because the people feel comfortable when they go there. It's very very nice, as opposed to some place where it's just somebody sitting behind the desk and it's like, oh, you know. You know, and, and then they they move on, um, and I think that's probably also the reason the atmosphere there is why some of them stay for a while, uh, quite a while. Uh, I did not realize until the appreciation lunch we we did, and it was so well deserved for the staff that like Monique had been here as long as she was. Yeah, and I knew Nick, and I knew yeah that I didn't know right, and. Uh, it's like, you know, those two are obviously, but it was like, oh, there's another one. It was like 16 years. Really, really great. So, um, again, another thing, just keep adding the list of we do well. You know, I don't know if that's maybe something that even can be mentioned, thinking about it now, in the report that we have people in the department that longevity as far as tenure. You know, that might wake up some because I, I never really thought about it until when Nick was recognized for his tenure of really realizing that some of these people have been here for a tremendously long time and do a tremendous job um, that maybe if people 
saw that happening, they'd say, hey, well, that's, you know, there's got to be something with community services again that's building, you know, building our own image. Um, yeah, well, Red and I were the only two spectators at the uh, anniversary party for the skate park. She said she missed the pizza, but I'd already and eaten, so. I want the cake, I'll be honest with you, but again, wise decision and, and hopefully it, again, it will be rescheduled. So um, I, I started realizing this last month, besides all the other stuff involved in this time of year, how much we are really doing as a city in the community services and the, the events, the number attended and the few that I, that I, yeah, I couldn't and uh, too like she commented the, um, the uh, what was it, the, the contest they had in earlier November, really well done. Um, and I spent some time talking to a couple of the people working there. Found out that they had skated there as a youth, um, and now are working there, and have no desire, you know, to go anywhere else. So, I think all in all, when we look at 2015 for community services and you know our small part thereof, it was a phenomenal year. And uh, I guess now the only challenge is how do we top that in 2016? But uh, I think, I think. Collectively, the crew exists in this group to to make that happen, and I look forward to being a part of it. I would like to maybe suggest that in January, I know we'll have a fairly full uh, agenda with uh, at least one agenda item, possibly, but that we put something back in front of us uh, to do either the parks tours or um, you know give us an assignment. I think most of us know the facilities that we don't need somebody from staff going with us and taking that time. But say, hey, here's January. In February, we want to talk about, you know, Palmetto Park. All right. Oh. That's our 31st park, in case you didn't know that. But, uh, and, uh, you know, so and ask people to maybe submit a report within a couple of week basis. We're talking about going by for 30, 45 minutes, maybe. The forum was put together which is pretty nice. And then staff can come back and give us kind of a synopsis of the feedback. And then we can maybe build the case for that, again, there are things that may need renovation or improvement or, or maybe not. Um, but that way we can be somewhat eyes and ears and a little bit more you know, involved in, uh, in the whole process. So um, if that could be done, I think that would be appreciated. Anyway, just in kind of closing, I want to wish everybody a very happy holiday season. Best wishes for a happy and healthy new year, and uh, which will happen what two weeks from now will be another another challenge. And uh, uh, 2015, I think, goes in the record books in the archives. That large archives, building right. that you refer to that could archives. be now Loretta handled by three thumb drives. Um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> when they tear that building down after this scan all. But uh, again, great year uh, and looking forward to more of the same next year. Thank you all. Thank you. And uh, same here. I'm going to keep this brief. Uh, I do have a request from my fellow commissioners that I would ask if you would calendar uh, the 19th uh, to be present and, uh, at the meeting. Uh, I'm sure you're going to do this anyhow, but I want to make a formal request that we have a 100% for the, for the commissioner report. I mean, it goes without saying, but I wanted to formalize. Also, I would ask Carol, since Francisco is not here, could you please send him an email asking for his uh, presence there, and just to make sure. We, uh, no cat calls, please, and no laughter, no, 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 no polite politeness would be appreciated. Yeah, yeah, and also you're welcome to bring guests, significant others, uh, spouses. Uh, so if you want to invite your, uh, you know, yep. I'm going to invite mine. Yeah, so yeah, well, you can bring whoever you want, Commissioner Rosenberg. But I would, you know, whatever you think is appropriate. <laughs> uh, secondly. Um, it's been a busy December, hasn't it, with all the Christmas and holiday activities. And I'm typically up to my ears with Victorian Christmas. I usually emcee it every year, you know, on the entertainment. And a lot of work does go into it, and we're always looking to refresh it every year. So your comments, uh, Commissioner Rosenbrook, is most welcome. 
uh, a lot of the activities are focused around the children so they can get hands-on with the crafts. And typically the way you would create crafts over 100 years ago. And uh, a lot of the families bring their children, so it's heavily children-based for the most part. Uh, with entertainment and uh, try to, you know, reach out to everybody in all uh, demographic uh, levels. So we had the highest attendance of any year at the Candle Walk and the uh, Victorian Christmas. So it is Disneyland on the south. I mean, it's viewed as something different, something refreshing, particularly the Candle Walk where all the candles are lit and throughout the park. So uh, it's kind of exciting to be part of that. Uh, effort. Uh, I also, and I, we say this on numerous occasions, but we cannot say enough of how much that the staff does such a fantastic job with uh, limited resources, you know, limited staffing, and I don't know how you get these things accomplished successfully, but it's amazing, you know, because we, we don't have a large head count within community services, and I know you run lean, but it, geez. The, out, the output is just fantastic. So uh, uh, kudos to, to all the staff. I've also asked, uh, and I, I think you already got feedback on this because I've been kind of doing a lobby effort to have some of your, uh, some of your worker bees that we rarely ever see uh, come and join us in one of our meetings and just so we get to know them even to the point of being part of the recreational report perhaps you can ask that, those individuals the, the coordinators the supervisors who don't get a lot of recognition uh, from our perspective because we hardly ever see that we just the job gets done so well but we know that these folks are executing just supremely so uh, that would be one of my requests to see if we could schedule in periodically the skate the, the skate director you know in charge of these facilities Ron in charge of the sports park and then some of his uh, supervisors can join us and uh, get a feel for us and we get a feel for them so uh, that would be one of the recommendations for next year uh, both myself and Commissioner Workmeister are going into our fourth year it's hard to believe that uh, you know we've been here what, three years. Do we get a pin or something, or do we get anything? Or, <laughs> you don't get you don't get anything. At, at, yeah. Okay, all right. So <laughs> it's certainly been to me one of the most enriching experiences because it really goes to my roots. And you've heard me say this that I have degrees in parks and recreation and. I've always wanted to practice my craft, and this gives me an opportunity to leverage my experience to help the city and advise the city council uh, on these matters. So I'm all excited. So I want to wish everyone a fantastic holiday season and a safe one. And uh, we'll see everybody at our next scheduled commission meeting, which reminds me we do are sure we're going to be talking about the um, Whispering Hills project is that correct it's it will just be an update on whispering hills it would just be an update it's an update right so the is that the a rec report is that a report thing it's a report the recommended action is going to be received and filed but I, I do need to just advise the Commission keep you in the loop as to where we're going with that okay so it's nothing going to be formal as far as a, a formal hearing or a discussion at this point uh, that's correct there's it's there's not really anything to discuss question and answer if the commissioners have questions Okay. Right. But there are some interesting developments as to where that's yeah, well, going. I'll be anxious yeah. to see the agenda and how that comes sure. out. I just wasn't sure what the posturing on that would be, but appreciate the update. If there's no further business at hand, I'll call this meeting adjourned.